All right, gang, Mass 6610. Uh, the purpose of this video is twofold. First of all, I want to introduce you to the syllabus and uh, class policies, you know, how you navigate Blackboard in a course of mine. And the next thing I want to do is uh, introduce you to R, which is this uh, statistical software uh, package that we'll use in this class. So uh, let's just go to the class and jump in. So Mass 6610, summer 2021. Uh, I tried to keep the Blackboard organization as simple as possible because there's a lot going on. Uh, you know, at a face-to-face -face class, I can come in each and every, uh, you know, approximately three hours uh, each week. Uh, well, for a two-hour course, it would be about two hours each week, but I can just tell you stuff, right? Well, it, it's, it's more difficult in an online course. So organization structure is at a priority, I think, in an online course. So uh, in an attempt to meet that uh, I run almost everything through content. Now, the first thing you're going to notice, uh, <laughs> in case you like take a weekend trip to Mars or something, you're going to be able to see this document. I wish I could make it smaller where it's not so, you know, like in your face, but uh, I, I don't know how to do that. So, uh, but, but that's okay, right? So what this allows you to do, it allows you to go, to go into each week. So lesson one corresponds to week one. Uh, lesson two, week two, and so on and so forth. So uh, this document right here, if you go to the syllabus, what, which we will in just a second, uh, you'll see that it's just a condensed version of all the stuff we have here. Now, in the syllabus, you get more information. It tells you to watch six instructional videos, how, how many hours it's going to take, and you know, so on and so forth. Uh, the purpose of this document is just to give you a snapshot of what is due in each lesson. So you'll notice uh, lesson one uh, on Wednesday, May 12th, you have a discussion forum uh, post number one, which is due on Blackboard, and discussion forum post number two, your learning check, is also due on Blackboard. All of the discussion forum posts are due on Blackboard. Now, the way you find those is go to the discussions link. And you'll see that you have discussion forum post number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Uh, I, I'll go ahead and tell you the first one, well, the first one's an introduction, so it's got to be easy. Uh, the second one is pretty easy. The third gets a little bit more challenging. And the fourth and the fifth uh, discussion forum post are, are going to take quite a bit of time. So, um, you know, uh, plan accordingly, I guess you would say. But the first... Uh, Discussion forum post is the introduction, introduction which is due this week, uh, the first week of class on, I think, Wednesday, right? So if you just click that, uh, click create a thread, uh, put your name, not mine, and provide a brief introduction, just type it out right here, come down and hit submit, uh, you'll get full credit for that. Now, uh, what kind of stuff should you put in your introduction? You put whatever you feel comfortable sharing, uh, but a few things that you may consider sharing are your hometown, previous colleges and universities attended, along with degrees earned, uh, hobbies and interests, and something interesting about you. Uh, I'll play along. Uh, number one, my hometown, I live in Carlisle, Kentucky, uh, previous uh, colleges and universities attended. I actually started out at Eastern Kentucky University and uh, not successfully. I flunked out uh, my first attempt at, the, at college. I had a uh, 1.58 GPA the first semester and I had a 0, 0.00 GPA the second semester. I did not attend one single class my second semester. I had a lot of fun, did a lot of stuff. Uh, academics just wasn't uh, one of those things. So uh, failed out, lost my scholarship, lost my funding, uh, worked a couple years, went back to school. I uh, actually went to Maysville Community College, uh, received a, an associate degree in electrical engineering technology. Uh, from there, I transferred to Moorhead State University, graduating in 1989, uh, 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 getting a, uh, uh, a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics uh, with a minor in Statistics. Uh, in 1994, I completed my master's in mathematics from the University of Kentucky, and um, in 2002, I completed my PhD, also from the University of Kentucky, 
in statistics measurement and evaluation. Uh, hobbies and interests, uh, I love to play golf, I love to scuba dive. Uh, in fact, I have three scuba diving trips uh, scheduled this summer. Um, uh, yeah, I like to just hang out. I like uh, you know, spending time with family, friends, boating. Uh, we live on a lake, and I have a pontoon, so uh, I like to spend days out there. I like just about anything that uh, uh, puts me in the sun, uh, if you will. That's why I have to uh, go, go see my dermatologist every year, right? Uh, something interesting about me, uh, I have uh, two daughters. Uh, they're both 17 years old, and there's 35 days difference in their ages. Uh, see if you can figure that one out. Well, some of you probably already know, because again, two-thirds of you have had me in class previously. Uh, my daughters are uh, adopted from China. We adopted Sadie, who's the oldest, uh, by 35 days. Uh, uh, in, in 2005, uh, Bailey uh, was adopted in 2006. Uh, Got to brag on them a little bit. They, uh, they both... Uh, were uh, accepted into the Governor's Scholar Program here in Kentucky. They'll either attend Center, um, uh, Bellarmine, or Moorhead State for a five-week program. Uh, so you know, it's, it's, it's quite an honor, uh, very competitive. Uh, Bailey will attend Governor's Scholar. Sadie will not. Sadie was also accepted into a summer program at the University of Chicago, which is her dream school, uh, where she's applying and she hopes to get accepted. Uh, she was uh, one of 32 accepted into this uh, Emerging Leaders Program. So uh, because the dates coincided between it and Governor Scholar, she had to choose one over the other, and she chose the one for University of Chicago. So uh, really proud uh, of them. So uh, in, in the same spirit, same kind of kind of narrative, you can, you can share some things about you to to let us get to know you a little bit better. Now, something else you may notice, now the rest of these are just, you know, statistics stuff, right? So uh, you'll, you'll type up your, uh, your answers there. Now, something else you may have noticed is this peer-to-peer -peer tutoring. I've heard so many people who completed PhD programs that said if it hadn't been for other students with whom they cre you know, created study groups and worked very closely with, they probably wouldn't have successfully completed their program. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, I know there was for me in my master's program. I worked very, very closely with a couple of other students. Uh, and I probably in many ways learned as much or more from them in our study groups as I did from the classroom experience. So uh, I will monitor this from time to time, but I will do everything I can to keep from making comments here. I kind of want this to be just between you and the other students in the group. Now, we have a unique feature this time because I have two graduate assistants and both of them will be taking this class. So it's going to be one of their responsibilities to monitor and lead the discussions in this peer-to-peer -peer tutoring. Both are exceptional students, uh, uh, so I think, um, I feel very confident that they'll do a great job in, in monitoring this discussion forum post, all right? Uh, or that's discussion forum thread. So, uh, you know, week seven, you have an assignment that's due Thursday, June 24th. Final project is due Sunday, June 27th. Uh, you'll notice there's a midterm exam. Uh, midterm exams are proctored by ProctorU. So what I will do is I'll set up the, um, the test session, and you will get on and choose a, I think it's a three-hour time block from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., so starting June uh, 13th on a Sunday. You can choose a three-hour time block anywhere between 8 a.m. Uh, and 11 p.m. on Monday, June 14th. Uh, I uploaded a file here for ProctorU. Uh, here's a document that you can read, tells you how it works, and please test your equipment before your test session. I would say that 95% of issues with students is because they didn't test their equipment, they didn't download the proper uh, file extension. They were using a, a browser that, that's not acceptable. Uh, if you'll do this, you minimize the possibility of having testing issues. So again, back to content. 
So, uh, just as we do, would in a face-to-face -face class, I would probably begin with the syllabus. So I've already downloaded it, so I encourage you to do so as well. Uh, my name, my office, that's pretty irrelevant because I won't be on campus this summer. Uh, my office hours uh, are given, those are uh, through Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan in an online course of having the structure of office hours because I'm pretty much available from Mondays at 7.30 a.m. until Saturdays around noon. I will do my best to answer your emails as quickly as possible, and I encourage you to reach out uh, for me to get help. So am I only available, you know, because Monday, 10 a.m. to noon, well, maybe you don't, you don't need me then. Maybe you need me Mondays at 5 o'clock. Well, then email, and, uh, and I will help you. Uh, I don't work on Sundays, which is a little bit inconvenient because uh, most of the, um, the, the um, uh, assignments are due on Sunday, but um, it, it's, it's just, I just don't. Uh, Sundays, I call that my F day, my faith, my family, my friends, and um, especially in the summer. So, uh, you, you know, there may be a chance that I do uh, I will answer your email on a Sunday, but more than likely I won't. So don't depend on that. Uh, and that would be, you know, if you if you if you need to procrastinate and you don't get to uh, the assignment until Sunday and you need help, you know, reach out on the uh, discussion forum post for peer to peer, or just schedule through the week where you can get in touch with me on uh, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, up to noon, and I'll and I'll help you. Uh, Textbook, uh, two, I would uh, encourage you to look into. Uh, this Andy Field book, Dis Discovering Statistics Using R, is exceptional. Uh, it's quite expensive, uh, but, um, you know, really, if you'll watch the instructional videos, you probably don't even need this textbook. But if you're one of these people who just don't want, doesn't want to watch the instructional videos, then this could be extremely helpful. Um, it's, it's, well, I'm not going there. Uh, the rest of the stuff there, you know, course objectives, uh, again, we get down to the topic outline. Uh, notice you get more information than you do on the content page. You get the number of hours approximately that these things will take, and you get the uh, uh, due date. Notice, oh, this is a typo. Uh, this should actually be Wednesday the, what, 14th? Is that right? So... If there is a discrepancy or a difference between what you see in the syllabus and what you see on the main page, the main page takes priority. Because you'll notice uh, that, um, well, I thought there was a difference someplace. Uh, yeah, there is a difference, and I'll have to up uh, upload this and change it. Uh, I didn't think it was fair to make an assignment discussion forum post due on Sunday, May 30th. So I actually extend this because it's uh, Memorial Day weekend. I actually extend this to, uh, let me make a note to change that, extend this to Tuesday, I think June 1st, I believe. Uh, so you'll get a few extra days there. So again, this will take priority over the syllabus. Um, so let's continue through the syllabus. Uh, we're getting ready to get down to the fun stuff, the grading policy. There's 1,000 points uh, possible, and you can determine your letter grade assignment by these percentages. Uh, grad school is different than undergrad. Pretty much grad school is passing, B's and higher, failing, B minuses, and lower. Uh, you must have a 3.0 GPA uh, to, to successfully complete your program. B minus is uh, semi-acceptable. I always felt if I ever received a C, uh, I didn't, I had a, a 4.0 in my PhD, but uh, if I received a C, that was failing work at the grad level. So let's not do that. Let's just watch the instructional videos, submit things on time, don't procrastinate, do your job, reach out to me for help, reach out to others for help, and let's, let's make it happen. Uh, disability statement, uh, if you um, are entitled to any ADA accommodations, uh, please let me know, and I will do everything in my power to make sure that you, those are, are, uh, are met. Um, academic policy and procedures, and guys, don't cheat. 
don't Google stuff. Don't, you know, do your assignments and, and, and take responsibility. And, you know, we, we don't want to get into this. Go, you know, meeting with the dean of students and having those uh, academic misconduct hearings just aren't fun. And, uh, you know, I don't like to initiate those. And um, so, so just, just, just do it the right way. Um, so let's go back to uh, content. So what does a great, uh, you know, a week look like? So uh, let's just dive into one. So uh, review descriptive statistics and inference. So, uh, first of all, you get the objectives, some of the things that I will cover. Then you go into the lesson resources and you get the um, um, instructional videos. And if there are any files uh, that I need you to use in the instructional videos, they will be put down here. So it's as simple as click this. Uh, well, uh, I see that YouTube is now putting, <laughs> wow, that's crazy, uh, ads on my instructional videos. Okay, whatever. Skip them. Uh, now, one thing I want to tell you. Uh, I am in the process of redoing, recreating a lot of my instructional videos. Uh, Mass 6610 will be uh, recreated next year. So if you see anything that's kind of time stamped and isn't appropriate or isn't uh, you know, relevant to this class, like you know, week one, August 21st, well, obviously we don't start August 21st. So just go ahead and fast forward to the content that does apply, and you'll see here that there's um, a PowerPoint. It's the only PowerPoint. Trust me, I'm not a fan of PowerPoints. It's the only PowerPoint of the class. But it's got a lot of information in there that, uh, that we need uh, in a review uh, perspective. Um, so um, get on down to... Lesson number two, we get into ANOVA. So our instructional videos, a couple of files, and then we'll get down to lesson assignments. There's an assignment that's due this week. Uh, here's the assignment, download it, work on it. When you're finished, scan your document, upload your assignment here, and I'll try to grade these within the next couple of days. Again, everything goes through content. Lesson number three. Three instructional videos. There's a data set that goes with these instructional videos. If you go back to content, you look at lesson number three. You'll see that there's a discussion forum post. Go to discussion forum post. Submit this by the due date, right? So it's all good. Or hopefully it's all good. All right. Uh, I think that does it pretty well. Uh, midterm exam stuff will be posted here. Uh, nothing's there yet. Your final project information is posted here. Uh, I don't think there's anything there yet either. So uh, let's talk a, lo a little bit about getting prepared to uh, conduct descriptive statistics, inference, and all these statistical analyses that uh, I am going to teach you. Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is download R. So all you have to do is uh, just type R and go to the R project for statistical computing. Uh, go to download R. You need to select a CRAN. I would uh, probably uh, I tell you, it doesn't matter. They all do about the same thing. As a UK fan, it's hard for me to choose anything from Duke. But uh, I think there's one from Case Western. Yeah, I, I don't even know. that. I, I hear the Duke crayon is excellent. I just can't use it because uh, I'm a UK fan and we don't like Duke. So I would probably use Case Western, but maybe you don't have hangups like me. So anyway, choose it, download it according to the machine that you have. And you will have R downloaded on your machine. Now, there's a data set, just to illustrate a few things. There's a data set in the first lesson.
No, there's not. There's a data set in the second lesson. Nope. Am I in the right class? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, Okay. There is supposed to be a, uh, a data set. This is absolutely insane. Well, there will be. Huh. Well, that is very interesting. So, um, if there is a data set, I'll tell you where there's a data set. Surely this is one. Um, huh. Absolutely insane. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you I downloaded uh, data sets today. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's go to a data set that I downloaded right here. You'll see Lesson 1, SAT. Um, <laughs> in, uh, well, yeah, I'm speechless. I have no idea. I, I uh, uploaded those earlier. And for some reason, it didn't take. So, um, well, anyway, there will be a link there. You download it. Uh, it'll probably go to downloads. I always uh, uh, save it to my desktop. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come in here and rename this as something that's, that's easy to type with no uh, spaces. So I'm just going to call it uh, satgender.csv. Now, for us to import a data set into R, uh, we have, must have the .csv, and most of the files that I upload uh, in this class will be in .csv uh, form. Now, first thing I have to do is I have to tell R to look on the desktop as my working directory. So I'm going to do get my working directory, and I'm going to see where R is currently going to look for files. Well, right now it's just going into my DDAR profile, but I want to change that. to the desktop. So typically all you have to do is just take what you see here. If there's anything past the name, maybe documents or maybe downloads, just change that to desktop. Otherwise, just hit enter. So now you have told R to go look on the desktop for the files. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just name the file data and I will do read.csv and now I have to type exactly like the name of the file on the desktop I have to type that uh, in the, the read.csv command so that's the reason I don't like to have a lot of spaces that's the reason I don't like to have any uh, you know lots of lots of different words uh, I like to just keep it simple where everything uh, has no spaces and I always do mine in capital letters but you don't have to uh, next thing we have to do is we have to attach the data before we can analyze it. And the next thing I like to do is look at uh, the, uh, just type head data, and what that'll do, it'll give me the first five or six uh, lines of the data set. So you can see what we have here is really not an acceptable data set, because if it was acceptable, the information on line one would be specific to one person and it isn't here. So what we have is we have uh, information for females, 529. There's some other, well, it's SAT scores for uh, uh, males. So this really isn't uh, a viable uh, data set. So what I would want to do is I would want to come back in and modify this. So I want to copy this. Copy. 
copy this. So I need all of uh, these to be males, right? And I need all these to be females. Now I have my SATs, I have gender, I can get rid of these, I can do a save as. and save this SAT gender 2. All right. Now, I'm going to go back through. SAT gender 2. Attach data. We're going to see that um, uh, the head of the data changes a little bit because now I have a data set that I can work with. And again, a, an appropriate data set is if I read left to right, I have information on one person. Up here I didn't have that. I had information on a score for a female and a score for a male. That is not an appropriate data set. This way I know the first subject, I know their gender, and I know their SAT score. Okay. So again, and you'll see that in statistics. People who know squat nothing about statistics will always look at a data set like this and read left to right. Because the third person here scored a 620 on their SAT. Their gender is female. So we get some juicy gossip about that person, right? We get kind of their academic achievement score on the SAT. Statisticians, people who work in statistics, could care less. We read vertically. I look at this and I'm already thinking, well, what does the distribution shape look like for SAT? What's the mean SAT? What's the standard deviation SAT? What's the measures of central tendency? What's the measures of variability? What percentage are female? What percentage are male? So I can answer those questions. So, uh, you know, I could look at uh, a histogram of SAT and I can see that I have a bell-shaped and symmetric distribution. Not a normal distribution. Uh, this is a sample. A normal distribution is a theoretical distribution, a probability distribution. Uh, this represents a sample, so it is not normally distributed. It looks like it probably came from a normal distribution, but this is a sample that we would say is bell-shaped and symmetric. Uh, we can look at a box plot of SAT to see if we have any outliers. We actually do have an outlier, so uh, someone scored uh, very high, uh, so we can probably just look at the range of SAT and see that the SATs range from 283 to 834. So whatever student scored the 834, I didn't even know you could get an 834 on a subpart. I wonder, well, let's assume you can. Uh, so whoever got the 834 would be considered uh, an outlier. All right, something I can do to get a little bit more information is I could do SAT over gender. And you'll see I get a side-by-side -side box plot. Now, when I do a side-by-side -side box plot, you get uh, where we can compare visually medians. The dark bars are the medians. We can compare Q3s. We can compare Q1s. We see that when partitioned out across gender, we have two scores that emerge as low outliers for, for males, and we have two scores that emerge as high, outlier, high outliers for males. From the female population, the female sample, actually, uh, we have no outliers uh, that emerge. Uh, I can come in and look at the mean for SATs, so this is going to give, you the, give me the mean of everyone. Uh, I can look at the SAT. Uh, the standard deviations. Again, this is for uh, the entire sample. Uh, 
If I want to look at the SAT across gender, uh, I can see that the males have a, an average of 563, while the females have an average of 514.5. Uh, I can do the same thing for standard deviation. I can see that the variance is slightly higher for, well, not the variance, I'll do it in just a second. Uh, the variability as measured by the standard deviation is slightly higher for males than it is for females. And if I want to do the variance, uh, I can get that here. All right. Um, so we're going to learn a lot of stuff, a lot of commands uh, with R. Uh, I really don't want to get into a lot. I mean, at this stage of the game, uh, at, at this part of the course, if you can get a data set to your desktop, name it to where it's easily uh, imported into R, and if you can just do some basic things, then um, then I think we're doing uh, doing pretty good at this at this stage. All right, uh, back to the course. Um, again, I think I've covered just about everything I wanted to cover in this video. It's going to run a little bit longer than what I what I wanted, but uh, that's just uh, the way it is. So uh, most importantly, if you have any questions, reach out. I'll do my best to to answer your questions and uh, so guys let's make it a good course uh, I look forward to teaching the course I look forward to uh, having everyone as a student so take care